Hey NBA, it's Vincent Sacco. I'm pastor at Middlesbrough Baptist Church, also known as Cambridge Road Baptist Church in, in Middlesbrough, of course. And John had asked me to come on and to share a few thoughts about how we're trying to be creative, trying to think in new ways about opening up church life and kind of rearranging church life post COVID, post pandemic and lockdown. So um, yeah, I'll share some thoughts with you now pre-recorded. Um, with the caveat that, you know, some of this is, all of this is new, and I think we're all kind of uh, trying to figure out what we're doing right now. And so um, this is just, you know, my my context, what works for my church and, and um, for, for me as a leader. So um, take with it what you will and what doesn't seem right to you, then, you know, don't don't worry about, it, of course, but, but you'll know that. Um, yeah, so I think for us, we... We were in the the process of going through reimagine uh, before the pandemic and had kind of wrapped that up and we had done some stuff with with LICC and um, and kind of imagine church and, and things like that um, as a church before I got there with um, during the interregnum and and both with um, with Nigel before me and, and others so um, so I kind of walked into a situation where it was kind of in the church culture to be thinking about vision and what was coming next. But I don't think we had started to, to nail down quite what that would look like um, beyond sort of a few ideas here or there. Um, and there were some good ideas, but I, I don't think it had been kind of packaged together. And so for us, I think the time of pandemic has been um, really the, the process of a, a couple of things. One was we've been really devoting this time to prayer. Um, and I think that's really important. We're we are not the church that is going to be, you know, ending poverty um, or, um, you know, starting the next new great program right now during the pandemic. That was just never going to be what we did during this time. Um, and and I had to, you know, kind of resign myself to that with God. Um, you know, talking to other minister friends and stuff like that who are doing really great things and you know wanting to be a part of that, but we just didn't have the resources or the time or the money or or anything to be able to do that. So I'm sure some of you will know what it feels like. Just you know, it's been a struggle just to get a Sunday service out. Um, let alone the the other mission and discipleship stuff with all the the COVID things going on. And so for us, that was probably more our reality. Um, but one thing that we knew we could do um, was to pray. And that's not a small thing, is it? It's not a tokenistic thing. Um, and I think God's been teaching me that a lot. And so I, I talked previously in an NBA thing where John and I did an interview about um, we've been doing prayer walking. Prayer walking has become a regular part of my week um, where I walk around the, the patches of, of neighborhood around our church and just pray and, and intercede on behalf of our world um, as the church. Um, and we've had a good practice of praying and, and just seeking God during this time for the future, for what it holds, and for the people in our kind of immediate sphere and in our um, patch of Middlesbrough. And then secondly, we've, we've been thinking about vision as well, kind of coming out of that prayer. Um, we as a church have kind of been looking at, you know, one, what is happening in the context of COVID and the, the pandemic, and two, um, what we look like as a church and, and how we fit into that mold, and three, um, what does the Bible say and how do we need to more conform our, our church practices to that? Um, you know, nothing, nothing really groundbreaking there, but um, as you guys will probably feel like COVID has been this giant cosmic pause button. Button, hasn't it? Um, and it's this chance to stop, to look around, and to think about what it is God is doing, what it is we've been doing, and maybe where those things have diverged and, and maybe where they need to come back together. Um, and so for us, you know, we're a small, quite elderly church. And for us, we're, we're really thinking about how do we need to form vision and how do we need to be a stronger church coming um, out of this pandemic? And for us, I think that we will be a stronger church coming out of this pandemic. I really do. And so we've been preaching through the book of Acts since um, before the pandemic. Uh, so we've, we've been in it for about um, 15, 16 months now. 
and that's been really good. And of course, the book of Acts is great if you're trying to, to think about church vision and, and where the church is going, because you look at um, what it was like at the beginning. And we've we've kind of looked at, at the, the pandemic and we've realized that for us, we're kind of summing up how we want church to look as everyone a disciple for all of life and gospel-centered community. And, and that's just the idea of, of a lot of the stuff that you guys will be familiar with. We've been reading, um, let's see if I have it here, we've been reading the, the, the Trellis and the Vine, um, which is a really lovely book. Um, uh, has some good ideas and you know not some of it you can take and leave but uh, we've been reading it as a leadership team and it's it's really good it's kind of just that idea about releasing everybody to be a minister and so we've drawn some stuff from that some stuff from the LICC stuff in terms of equipping people to be the church scattered and and so and we've come up with this vision statement and we're really um, practically the way that that's looking is that we're really kind of pushing for small groups to be um, more robust, um, for membership to be more robust, um, and for, for sort of church covenant to be robust, more robust. So thinking about, hey, how do we define who we are as a church and community to one another? How do we make that more robust in terms of, um, you know, responsibilities to one another for, for discipleship um, in big and in small ways? And um, and looking at how do we practically work that out in the the structure of, of a small group and how do we make small groups more than just like a, a, a Bible study here or there and, and a bit of like tea and coffee and, and maybe some some kind of prayer at the end um, and looking at how do we actually build um, relationships where we, we nurture sort of spiritual father and motherhood and spiritual family practices um, where, where people in the church are actively pouring into one another um, with, with Bible reading and prayer and just being a presence, having that ministry of prayer presence across generations, which is really important for our church because we're quite elderly. Um, and, you know, thinking about how do we get um, sort of our elderly people along for this journey and, um, you know, calling them into the work of discipleship and what that looks like for their stage in life, because it's going to look very different for somebody who's in their 30s or 40s and has a young family or something like that, as opposed to somebody who's um, quite elderly. And so thinking about that, uh, if you want some good thinking about that, there's a, um, a Catholic theologian called Ronald Earl Heiser wrote a book called Sacred Fire, and he talks a lot about sort of the different stages of life and what discipleship looks like, and that's been kind of formative for my thought and thinking about that recently. And so, yeah, we're we're looking at all of these strands. We're looking at um, how we how we create a, an atmosphere where everyone is involved in the work of discipleship. It's not just myself and the, and you know the keen ones on the leadership team. Um, the the 20% who do 80% of the work, right? And and how do we structure ourselves so that small groups are important, especially with the pandemic, where likely for a little bit, the rule of six is our reality. And, you know, rule of six works quite well with small groups, doesn't it? And so thinking creatively, like, hey, possibly we could train up people to do communion and have, you know, groups of six doing communion or groups of six doing small groups. And I don't know if this will happen. I, I don't know if we have the necessary leadership for it, but this, these are the kind of thoughts and conversations we're having. How do we, how do we equip and release people and train them up to be able to be part of the work of ministry and, and thinking about um, my role as minister, not as a, uh, you know, the one who does everything, but uh, the the disciple or in chief or the disciple in chief and um, thinking about my role as, as training up others and releasing others to, to do the work of God and, and kind of taking initiative training and building the necessary structures to do that. And so that's kind of how we're thinking about things. Um, a lot of it's still kind of big ideas up in the cloud and we're, we're rolling that out actually tonight at our uh, church AGM. Um, we, we've been preaching about it. We had some, we, we've been talking about it as a church for a long time, but we're kind of having a bit of a question and answer session um, at our AGM. So, so pray for us if you guys have a chance to. And um, yeah, I hope this has been helpful. John told me about 10 minutes, so we're just about there. So I'll, I'll wrap it up. Um, thanks guys for listening and uh, yeah, love you and, and hope your pandemic's going well. I know it's been a rough time, but so thankful for you guys as, as pastors and, and leaders in the church and for what you've done. Um, I know it's been really tough, but um, man, I'm just, uh, yeah, pleased, pleased to, you know, know that there's people alongside me that are, that are serving and doing um, similar work. So be blessed. Love you guys. Bye.